All right, First Chronicles 20, let's call this one Before You Lose Time, in contrast to the last chapter that we entitled Before You Waste Time, where we saw some kings waste their time in unnecessary conflict with David and Israel. This time we are going to look at how David lived his life wisely before he lost the prime of his life, the times when he was doing his best soldiering. But before that, we are going to see the end of the conflict with the Ammonites at the beginning of the chapter as the Ammonites are finally and fully subdued. And as we said, instead of living as neighbors at peace with Israel, they end up becoming servants to Israel, at which point the chapter is going to shift and talk to us a little bit more about the Philistines who are likewise going to be subdued as Israel's neighbors. But we're going to see how there are going to be continuing conflicts that flare up. And uh, those conflicts are actually going to provide a bright side because Israel is going to be able to overcome some of the Philistines more menacing giants, seeing that they still have some giants left in their army. And this is going to be a retelling of the story we saw back in 2 Samuel 21 of how David's armies overcame the giants in the Philistine armies. But 2 Samuel 21 is going to give us an additional insight that we don't get here. And that is the way in which David, as he aged, got fatigued in a battle that made him vulnerable to one of those Philistines. And Abishai, Joab's brother, Joab being uh, the general or commander of David's army, is going to come to David's rescue as he sees David fainting in battle. One of the Philistines trying to take advantage of the situation. And Abishai, described as a mighty man, is going to save David's life, giving us an interesting contrast between the two tellings of this story, where we've now gotten to see a number of other kings whose servants or even their own family members were actually eager to see them fall in battle. Among them, Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, who after one of his soldiers, Hazael, was anointed king over Syria as God had prophesied through Elijah. He is not going to waste time waiting for Ben-Hadad to die. He's going to kill Ben-Hadad. And likewise, Jehoram or Joram, the one that was Ahab's son, uh, when Jehu was told that he was anointed king over Israel, he turned against Jehoram with God's permission, understanding the degree to which Ahab, Jezebel, and their household had lived wickedly in reigning over Israel. And likewise, Sennacherib, after his failed invasion of Israel during the days of Hezekiah, he returns home to have his sons actually kill him. And those are only a few of the kings we saw either fall in battle or at the hand of their own servants who didn't seem to mind turning on those kings when the opportunity presented itself understanding that they had served those kings year after year, watching them live in shady ways. However, David, after all the mercy he showed to Saul, even while Saul was trying to kill him, and even after Saul was dead, the way in which David rewarded those who risked their lives to retrieve his body, at this point in time when Abishai could have easily allowed David to die in battle, we see Abishai as yet another example of one of David's soldiers who was willing to not only risk his life for David, but potentially lose his life for David leading into a time when we're going to see a lot of kings leading with a level of integrity that's actually going to make their servants want to see them die.